So let's get started. Hi, I'm Robert Virgin, and today I'm going to talk about the web ants, ants, the little, the little insects. Those of you who remember programming in Logo yeah. might be surprised to hear that it's a language that is still used today, and not used just for kids, but used for multi-agent simulations, for actual serious <coughs> research. And you can see a version on the screen here of something called NetLogo that is, well, as modern as it gets in that space, which is Java, so only 15 years old. Uh, but it, it's pretty cool. And what we're going to look at today is a simulation of ants. Now, if, if you happen to be tasked, if someone came to you and said, please, can you emulate an, an ant colony foraging for food? You might think that's pretty complicated. I mean, you have to think of potentially millions of little things going over complex terrain, finding food, how do they find food, how do they bring it back? It seems fairly complicated, but that's actually not the case. This is a simulation of ants finding food, and the code is about 100 lines long, because every single ant is fairly, fairly simple. And what it does is very, is very basic. An ant walks around randomly until it finds either pheromones or food. If it finds pheromones, it follows them. If it finds food, it goes back to the colony, and this starts again. And when it goes back to the colony, it leaves a trail of pheromones that others can find, and the pheromones evaporate over time. So, let me run the demo, and you can watch it run while, I'm, while, while I keep on talking. The, the thing is, you'll see this builds fairly interesting and very efficient uh, patterns on screen that correspond to non-random behavior, because that's emergent. When we browse the web, when we create content, we too are reasonably simple and basic systems compared to the complexity of the whole. And we too create very predictable um, uh, structures, even though our behavior, our individual behavior, may seem random. That's the system we built. Now, the web as a whole has a few problems that you might have heard of. You know, there's massive surveillance, of course, but there's also a tendency to create monopolies. And that's due to us. That's our behavior that creates the monopolies. There are very valiant efforts to re-decentralize the web going on, but they're all technology focused. And I'm sure most of them are also. My group at Salmon, they're really great. But the problem is, if we don't understand the basic behaviors, the basic structures, the basic incentives that mean that, tech, that monopolies emerge in such systems, then all we'll do is reproduce the same monopolies over different technology. It might be harder to stop, it might be better decentralized, it might be technically superior, but we'll get the exact same big companies that create trouble for us and that we only get rid of when their intelligence disappears inside the, own, the event horizon that they generate through their, through their massive uh, size and they start acting completely crazy. So, what I want to say today, and this is not funny, but um, I will, this is a call to action to do more research in web science, in complex complexity science, in network science, in order to understand what the fundamental patterns, what the fundamental simple behaviors are that cause us to support and to create and to generate monopolies through our own individual behavior. It's not easy. Uh, these are all nascent sciences. There are some areas of research that map onto that, but we need to do more. And we, as the technical web building community, need to talk to the people doing network sciences today so that we can figure out how to beat this and how to build a system that is free of monopolies. Thank you very much.